What's up guys, Will Gibbons here and we are back with another tutorial and this time we're getting into lighting. Now most of us would agree that lighting tends to either make or break a shot. And because of that, I find myself spending a lot of time creating custom lighting rigs for all of my renderings and scenes. When I wanted to find a way to shortcut this process, I decided to make a library of custom area lights that I could drag into my scene in a matter of seconds. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how I achieve this and how you can do it so you can save a bunch of time and create better renderings in seconds. Let's go. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to go from a very basic and underwhelming lighting setup like you see right here to something that looks a little bit more pro and photorealistic like this in a matter of seconds. Today's lighting tutorial features some custom assets that I made myself and I'm making them available to you for free. So head on over to willgibbons.com downloads to get your files so you can follow along with the tutorial as well. All right, first let's show you how to use these lights and then I'll explain how I made them. Now that you've downloaded the Area Light No Map Textures with Ball BIP from my website, double click it to launch Keyshot. Now it should start out looking like this, it's all black. And if we were to go to the scene tree, go ahead and turn one of these lights on. The first one listed is abstract circle splotch. And you will see that immediately you get a circle. You'll see we have a big long list of lights in here. And all you need to do is turn one of them on and then it will show up in the scene. So in the geometry view on the right hand side, and if for some reason yours is not showing, go ahead and hit O on the keyboard to show the geometry view. Now you can see how the scene is laid out. We have our big light, we have a little sphere, and then we have this backdrop ramp as well. So as we turn on and off different lights, we're gonna get different types of reflections in our model. And this is gonna give us a bunch of cool different options. There's even crazy shaped umbrella lights as well. So next you wanna add these lights to your Keyshot model library, which is a Keyshot 9 feature. So the way we'll do this is go ahead and select the sphere and hold control and click on the backdrop ramp, right click and delete both of those. And now you're gonna change your camera to look at the light. I know it seems weird, but this is how we're gonna get a, a thumbnail for this model. Then we'll go to the models library, which is this little block icon and then you're gonna click in the bottom right-hand corner, add model to library from scene. And now you're going to leave the geometry checkbox checked and the rest can stay as they are. But you wanna make sure you name it and then hit create. And you'll see now in my scene, I've got a thumbnail with these lights. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this scene and I will relaunch Keyshot. Okay, so I'm back in the scene that we looked at in the beginning of this tutorial where I have the interesting light and then the more boring setup as well. Now I wanna show you what we can do using your new area lights that you just imported into Keyshot. So go ahead and just drag that into your scene as long as you have a model in your scene, something to, to light, and you'll see that we get the lights imported just like that. Now you can position them, so we can kind of drag this around. And if I put my camera back to where it was, you can see we're reflecting in our sphere. And the other thing, if we go to the scene tab, in my big long list, you see all those lights just got imported. And what I wanna do is actually add a backdrop ramp as well. So I'm gonna to go to backdrops and add a backdrop ramp. If I zoom out, you'll see it's super duper big. Keyshot does some weird resizing things. So I'm gonna type in the scale for the backdrop ramp to be uh, 0.5 and I'll snap it to the ground and I'll move it back. I think that's gonna be a little too small. Let's try 1.5. There we go. If I move this into position, looking good, we'll double click it and make it a white backdrop ramp. And if we go back to our camera, you can see now we've got the reflection of the backdrop ramp. We got some good reflected light. Now if we go to our environment tab, I will take the brightness of that startup HDRI down to zero and it looks like our area light's a little too bright. So if I go back here to the scene tab, find the area light, double click it, I can decrease the brightness until we are not getting blown out on the ground plane or the backdrop ramp. And there you go, now we're looking pretty nice. Now if you want, 
you can go ahead and turn on and off these different lights and reposition them as needed. And all you need to do is grab one of them. And then in the geometry view on the right hand side, select that plane, right click and move selection. And if you click pick to set a pivot and just click on the ball, then we can rotate the light around it. And in the real time view, you can see it updating as uh, you move it. And then you can go and turn on another light. All right, so here we are back in the original interesting studio. And one thing I want to address is these reflections. So I just showed you how to create your own library of area lights with some unique shapes. What I did not address is the textures that you see applied to each of these lights in my scene. And the reason I held off on this is because these are textures that I purchased from a website called grayscalegorilla.com. Now this is not an ad for them, this isn't sponsored. I actually spent the $100 on these lights, which may sound expensive, <clears throat> but when you understand the process they went through to make them, you might understand it's pretty tough to create these 32-bit HDR uh, EXR files. That means they, they work really, really well, and I could not find anything else on the internet like these, so I ended up paying uh, you know, full price for these from their website. Now, you could go ahead and just take these images and put them on a plane, but the issue that I ran into is interesting. If we were to go into this material and I set it to something like Chrome, and then let's say that we had some light in our scene. Instead of pure black, if we zoom out, I'm, I'm basically adding light into my scene. But if we look here, you'll see that the lights I have in here, they're, they're actually shaped, these planes are actually shaped to match the image textures that I got from Grayscale Gorilla. And I went ahead and modeled matching planes for each of these because I didn't like the fact that if you place these image textures on just a, a like a plane, I'll show you what happens here in a second. If I put this image texture here, you will see that the reflection in this chrome sphere is really, really distracting and ugly. Unfortunately, the black area cannot be hidden in Keyshot because area light material in Keyshot does not support alpha transparency. So even if you're using these really high quality textures, there's nothing you can do to trim the black part away unless you go ahead and model actual planes that resemble and match these image textures, which is exactly what I did for all 30 of these image textures. So if we go back into my scene, for example, which one was this? This is the ring light. So I could go and find the ring light here and turn it on. And look, you'll see, let's go ahead and turn off the umbrella. You'll see the ring light sitting there behaving just like it should. And especially if I darken up the environment, it looks pretty cool. Let's go into that ring light and make it not so bright. So we can just drop its brightness and you'll see the detail of that ring light starts to come back into our scene. Um, it's easier to see, sorry, in the geometry view, you can see I actually went in and modeled a ring light that matches this texture exactly, one to one. But the, the, the trade-off, again, if this is in your scene, if this, this light's gonna be visible in your scene, or if it's gonna be reflected on your object, the realism that you are going to add to your scene by having lights that are not just a boring flat plane is going to be worth it in the end, in, in my opinion. You've got all sorts of different lights and, um, and I, I modeled all these different planes to match all these textures. So if you don't have the money or you can't justify the cost of buying these image textures, then you can still follow what I showed you in the beginning of this tutorial and just use my area light planes without the textures. I cannot uh, redistribute these textures, so the download on my website will not have these in them. But they, but you will get the Keyshot file, the scene that has all the area lights just without the textures, and you can still use them the same way I've shown you how to do here. The only difference is if you make that purchase on Grayscale Gorilla's website for 100 bucks, you have to go ahead and take all those textures and spend, you know, probably a half hour or so 
mapping those onto the corresponding planes that I gave you. All you have to do once you've applied the Grayscale Gorilla textures to your planes and then you've saved it to your model library, you just drag it in once, it takes a second to load, and then you position it where you want. Now, one thing to mention, uh, since I just added this to my scene and there was two model sets, it actually added doubles of everything. So what I wanna do is actually delete them from one of the model sets. There we go. So now we don't have doubles. And again, you are free to go about turning on and off whichever one you want, experimenting, finding out what works best for your scene. And you'll probably find that you have a couple of favorites that you'll end up using more, more often than others. And like I said before, really the thing that sells the more realistic lighting is having shadows with character, reflections that are not 100% perfect. You can see there's some shape in, in, and stuff in here in the light that's being reflected. Anyway, while I know this isn't the most elegant solution, having to drag 30 of these in all at once and then having to turn them on and off and then delete the ones you don't want, it's the only solution or workaround I could find in Keyshot. Now, I suppose I could have gone and imported one light, saved it to my library, and then repeated that all the way through but that would have been too tedious and taken too long. I'd rather just drag one thing in and have all the lights come in and then delete the ones I don't want in the end. Now, something to mention is if you're using the GPU to do your rendering, you gotta watch how much RAM you're using. In this example where I have the image textures actually applied to every single one of these lights, there's a lot of image textures in my Keyshot scene. So I would recommend deleting the ones that I don't wanna use before rendering because if I don't, as far as I know, the scene is holding all of those textures and it's going to put those on your GPU and you might run out of VRAM. So in the end, you only wanna keep the lights that you're using before you hit render. If you're on a CPU, it doesn't really matter as much. And if you're using the area light planes that I gave you without the image textures, then you don't need to worry about deleting the, the extras when you're done because it won't use up any extra RAM. And there you have it, another one in the can. Hopefully this one saves you time. I know I'm always looking for shortcuts and that was my goal with this one. If there are any questions, just comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And in the meantime, until the next tutorial, check out the playlist down below. I've been doing lots of live streams on tips and tricks for freelancers and I think that you'll dig them. So until next time guys, happy rendering.